Here are my thoughts on Babylon's box office and why did an $80 million movie open to less than $4 million? Bogus. What you're about to watch is an excerpt from my Patreon box office roundup. It's a series that I do over there talking about box office results and how movies are doing, how well they're doing. In this particular video, I went into great detail about the day to day on Avatar in the full video. If you're interested in this series or any of the other content on Patreon, the link is down below in the description. But here are my thoughts on Babylon's box office and why did an $80 million movie open to less than $4 million? First thing to talk about in here would be Babylon, the new Damien Chazelle movie, was in 3,000 plus theaters, average per screen, only $1,000, it made $3.6 million, below the Whitney Houston movie. Babylon cost $80 million. They spent $80 million on Babylon. It's got Margot Robbie, Brad Pitt, Tobey Maguire, and it opened with less than $4 million in the United States. That's not good. That's awful. Just awful. So a bunch of people are asking, why on earth did Babylon open so poorly with such a star-studded cast? And there's a branch of Twitter that's like, it's Margot Robbie. She's box office poison. She's in the lead. Amsterdam, she was in that one. It didn't do well. Here we get another movie. She's the star and it failed. No, that, that is not the reason. Maybe she's got a bad manager. Maybe she's picking the wrong prestige projects. But no, that is not the answer. Um, I'm pretty sure it's a bunch of different things. At its core, though... An $80 million movie needs to appeal to a broad audience. You have to be able to get average Joes to show up to your movie if it's going to cost $80 million, in which case globally you need to make over $200 million to make up your budget, production costs, and the money that goes to movie theaters. And it's a movie about Hollywood in the golden age of cinema and like this debaucherous version of it that's filled with cocaine and orgies. You know, a good family Christmas movie. Take the whole family out on Christmas day to go see that. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. It's over three hours long and it was always a movie designed for like niche cinephiles. At its best, it's not a movie that was going to be for a broad audience. It's just not. General audiences are not obsessed with Hollywood the way that Hollywood is obsessed with Hollywood. General audiences are not obsessed with Golden Age of Hollywood the way that film Twitter and cinephiles are. So they looked at it and they're like, why is it called Babylon? Uh, Margot Robbie's on a film set and then she's like partying and acting crazy. What is this movie? Like, I don't I don't know what this is. The reason I was interested in, I still haven't seen it yet, the reason I was interested is because it's a Damien Chazelle movie and Whiplash is great. I'm not bananas about La La Land, but it's really well done. So he's one of these directors that's just earned my respect and trust to check out whatever he's doing. So new Damien Chazelle movie, star-studded cast. Oh, I'm interested. The specific plot line about whatever it is in Hollywood and the debauchery there, that does not immediately interest me as someone that talks about movies for a living and literally has talks about in the name of my YouTube channel that is my brand that I make my living off of it. So I, I think that's at the core of the problem. But then you kind of go beyond that and you get into the marketing of it. They didn't really find a way to make it clear what the movie was, what the hook is like. What am I? What are these images that I'm seeing? Who is this for? I don't get it. And even beyond that, the critical sc score right now, I think, is in the 50s on Rotten Tomatoes. So like, Half of critics are saying, that's not for me. I've seen some critics saying it's one of the worst movies of the year, that it's just a tonal disaster, out of its mind crazy. It, it's just not a good film. Critics saying that. Others are loving it. Others, favorite film of the year. But it's not a movie that is, even to the people that were excited for it, they're not just universally loving the film. A lot of them are like, I didn't get that. I did not like that. That did not work for me. 
So then you kind of go, okay. So even critics that it was made for as a prestige film, they're not crazy about it. The movie came out over a week ago. So we have the cinema score. I think it's like a C plus. So the people that saw the trailer and went, I want to go see that. They went to go see it and they went, it stinks. So you have a movie that I think always was for a niche audience. Then they spent so much money on it that it couldn't be profitable. They had a marketing campaign that didn't really capture what it was about. Uh, it's inherently when you have a movie that people are like, oh man, it's wild and crazy filled with cocaine and orgies. There's a group of people that go, oh, I got to check that out. And there's a bunch of people that go, oh, that's not for me. And even beyond that, it just immediately, you're not bringing the whole family. It's only for adults. It's only for a niche group of people. And I, I saw, you know, some people even say like, the issue was they didn't market it right on TikTok. I don't know that the TikTok crowd are the people that they were trying to get to show up to the three hour movie about the golden age of Hollywood. So why on earth did Babylon open so poorly? Did it perform so poorly? I don't think this was ever going to be a movie that was going to be profitable. They spent too much money on it, whether that was because they thought it was going to be a prestige film that would get them awards, but it would be do better than it did. But I don't think they ever thought this was going to be a movie that was going to be a big moneymaker. But then they made a movie that was polarizing for critics, audiences, not going crazy for it. Didn't sell people with the marketing. And it was always a tough sell for a very niche audience. Put that all together. And then you release it at Christmas time. This does not feel like a Christmas movie. So you just put it out of a window of time where it just feels like. It feel, like They probably put it out at this point in time because they thought it was going to be a prestige movie. So you put it out at the end of the year to have some success going into awards season and audiences watching it. They just misread the tea leaves. They did not read the room. They didn't realize they didn't have a widely beloved film on their hand. They put it out at Christmas time. So it feels like a weird movie at the time. People aren't loving it. I think everything was a bit of a misfire here. And there's a bunch of people on Twitter like, you shouldn't be celebrating the failure of this movie and you should be disappointed because Twitter took a or, uh, Twitter. Hollywood took a big shot. They gave a bunch of movie and allowed a creative director to go with this wild, insane vision. You should celebrate the fact that they took that chance. I hear that and I go, I hear what you're saying. I want more original stories. I want Hollywood to take more chances. My issue is that Hollywood took a chance on a story about themselves. This is not an example of Hollywood took a chance on a project that would be widely regarded by no, I'm trying to get the camera to look in on my face. And when I have my glasses on, I can't see my face. It gets confused about if I'm a person or not, if I have glasses on. So that's kind of a problem because now I can't see anything. All right, it worked that time. Um, they made a movie about themselves. They took a big risk on like, we love Hollywood. We love Hollywood. So we'll spend a bunch of money on ourselves, Hollywood. I have a big issue with that, that their Hollywood is obsessed with themselves and then surprised when normal people aren't obsessed with them.